this hits patients, young people often, uh, absolutely in the prime of their lives at a time when they want to build their lives, their careers, and it can impact very significantly upon this. Early treatments for multiple sclerosis provided temporary relief, but the progression of the disease was neither altered nor stopped. So the notion of being able to intervene early can turn multiple sclerosis from a debilitating illness to a diagnosis that patients will simply have but live with. Supposedly it's been there since I've been 13, but I found out in 2017, I was always into action sports. I raced BMX, I rode BMX, I did motocross. That's when things start to jump. The immune system begins to recognize components of the myelin sheath around the nerves that regulate nervous conduction uh, as foreign. The analogy one of my doctors used was it's like an electrical cord. So if your TV's full, perfect picture, and then the rats come in and start chewing away the casing of that cord and starts hitting that central power source, uh, a lot of your TV and the picture of it's not gonna be right. This then is expressed as changes in sensation. As I'm sitting here right now, my legs tangle and weird things like that. It was my right side of my body. I would kind of freak out and then it jumped to my left side and, and stayed there. These experiences come and go as the disease moves from sight to sight within the brain and may progress to paralysis loss of function to patients being wheelchair bound. Yeah, kids, something that I would love to, to have one day. That's one of those conversations where I'm kind of worried about. I grew up with my dad and he was Superman on the beach. He would pull all the kids, all the boogie boards up and down. He would do the bike rides. And then having what I have is just an added thing where it's like, I wouldn't want my own kids have their childhood affected by multiple sclerosis. When I was in high school, a family friend was diagnosed with rapid progressive multiple sclerosis. It was an emotional fact that I filed away. Later, having trained in medicine, I began to realize that intelligent intervention in multiple sclerosis and other autoimmune diseases could happen if we understood them better. And that began about a 25-year odyssey that led ultimately to Ozanamod. What we've shown in the long-term studies with Ozanamod is that the thickness of the cortex and the volume of the brain does not decrease on treatment with Ozanamod, whereas patients who are treated on other modalities or placebo will show a thinning of the cortex and a loss of key volumes within the brain, which tracks with changes in cognitive function. We want to first do no harm. We want our drug to be safe and effective, and we want physicians to know precisely how to use it to generate the greatest benefit. And that would be a transformation of the future and the lives of these patients. And that obviously has been our goal. Don't stop, keep on going. There's guys like me that really look forward to the future with technology, uh, the science of it, the recovery of it. I've become obsessed with, with what I have and the sense of kicking its butt. And I know a lot of good people out there like doctors and scientists want to do the same thing for good people. So keep on doing it, don't stop.